Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be starting a brand new career mode and we're going to be rebuilding Brighton and Hove Albion. So yeah, this is the first career mode I'll be doing on my channel and hopefully it will be a almost daily uploaded series. Obviously I have to edit and stuff. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this first episode. We're going to be introducing you to the squad, telling you our tactics maybe getting into some transfers and signings of course i'll be waiting for you guys to drop some suggestions down below now i'm not sure if you know i'm a brighton supporter i have supported brighton for seven years of my life uh brighton till i die uh and yeah i can't wait to get into this career mode it's gonna be a good laugh good bit of fun might be a little bit ragey at some times but Hopefully, the real the rebuild process will start here. But yeah, just gonna set up the name. I think I might have a head already imported that I'll use. Yeah, that's the one. So we're gonna add no facial hair because yeah, it's realistic. <laughs> Short hair. Hmm. Which one looks the best? Which one looks like me in a way? Uh, does that one look any good? No. I don't think so. it looks like me. That one does. There we go. And I'm like hazel heads. So Nobody asked. So that's perfect. Nobody asked. I do need a lighter tone of skin as I'm not that tanned. Nobody asked! Although we are getting into the summer times. I'm not that tanned. Nobody asked! This one look alright. Oh, a little bit more tan. I'm not wrinkly. That looks good. Looks a bit like Steven Gerrard to be honest, but. Ayo. I think we're gonna go for a quite a smart look. We're gonna look quite professional. I think a charcoal suit would look nice if we do full charcoal suit. A tie, obviously the colours of Brighton and navy or like blue and white. So I think I'm gonna do the polka dot tie. That looks quite nice actually. Just some standard black socks and then I don't think green shoes look very nice do they no black shoes? No I think it needs a lighter touch. That looks nice yeah too much trust in my trousers there not to fall down nice car so there we are that is the look of our manager authentic club obviously brought in in the premier league and here we are so we start off with a budget of about 45.3 million Obviously, we play at the Amex, and I think our home kits and our home and away kit look beautiful this year. Actually, uh, I have got one myself, to be honest. But um, yeah, maybe if we get face cam in the future, maybe I wear it on face cam. But yeah, the objectives look quite easy: two very lows in domestic and continental, a medium in brand exposure, and two lows in financial and youth development. So I think we can get that done. Uh, obviously. Brighton haven't won many trophies. We think we've won League Two twice and League One once. So it will be the first major trophy if we are to win one sooner or later. But I do not play on world class. I will be playing on ultimate. Um, but yeah, five minute and a half, so I think gives us just the right amount of time to like obviously score a goal, maybe keep it a little bit more realistic. I think six minutes is a bit too long. because uh, yeah, it's just a goal fest from then on. I think five is about equal. Obviously, we're in England, so Sterling. European competitions enabled. No financial takeover. Uh, negotiation strictness. I'm going to put it on strict to make it a little bit harder to sign players, obviously. International job offers. Obviously, you can't actually get them if you're managing a, a club. So, yeah. Off the transfer window, we're going to have enabled. I think we do need some signings. We do need to let off some players. Uh, from the experience I've had going to the Amex and multiple times for five or six years I think I have uh, yeah 
there's some players that just you do need improving and hopefully we can in this first season reinforce the team I'm aiming for a top 10 finish to be honest top 10 I'll be very happy it looks as though Brighton aren't going to get there this season but we will try our absolute best this season in the career mode obviously to one do, one out them or one do them whatever you want to say uh, yeah I think top 10 would be class I think that's where Brighton really should be I feel as if Brighton this season have really shone they've been a very solid squad and they play some nice football under Potter I do love good old Graham Potter um, yeah we play some nice football we obviously we just can't finish and that's the reason why we're so low in the league or I wouldn't say low because we are about mid table but with about four games to go or three games to go and I'm not sure how many we have um, we sit I think 12 a warm welcome um, to you all yeah, without further we delay this we are pleased to introduce the new manager introduction the new manager here at the Seagulls we are going to try our best to keep this career mode realistic keep it n not too overwhelming as in we don't sign about five or six players per season I think we're going to limit ourselves to two or three signings per season I think in this first season we're going to sign about three players and it might die down from then on maybe we sign some backups but yeah international well yeah pre-season tournament we're just going to go for the one that pays the most money so yeah this one here um, and yeah so we get into the career mode now Let's have a little delve into the squad. I'm gonna, obviously, I'm going to try to keep it realistic, so I think I'm going to play a three-back system. I think Brighton in real life almost play like a, like almost this, like a three-four-two-one. But I think I'm going to play a three-four-one-two. I'm going to play Lamptey and Cucurella on the wings. We're going to. Where's Lamptey? I can't find him now. Where is he? There he is. Uh, we're going to play Lamptey and Cucurella a little bit further back, so it will bring about 10 spaces. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So yeah, that will give them the freedom to go up and down. I do think Muda should be in the starting 11. He's obviously a very good young prospect. Uh, in Wepu, he is my favourite player probably at Brighton this season. Uh, but maybe Kukurella actually, you can't really debate on that. Obviously, Basuma's had a very good season, but obviously but what happened to him earlier on, uh, the Brighton fans have been doubting him a little bit and thinking that his attitude's got the best, best of him. But in this career mode, I think we are going to utilise him. So I think we're going to start with Muda and Basuma in midfield, with Kukurella and Lamptey out wide. Uh, this back three has been quite shaky this season, I will be completely honest. I think Webster's injury put a dent in us. We didn't really have that solidity at the back, especially when Dan Byrne left for Newcastle. What a sell, by the way. 17 million for what, 32 year olds? Like, great sell from Brighton. Uh, Sanchez, I think personally, I know it's quite a broad opinion maybe, but I don't think he's been very good this season. And I genuinely think maybe Steel should be given a little bit more of a go. Well, maybe we try another backup keeper. We give them more of a go. Obviously, we have McGill, who's played a couple games this year. But I think, yeah, Sanchez will start for us because on FIFA, obviously, he is six foot six and he is a monster in goal. So, yeah, as I said, I think we're going to sign a new centre back and it'll probably replace Veltman. Uh, surprising seeing that Webster's got the leadership trait. But, uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, Veltman, I think he's going to be pushed down to the bench. Maybe Duffy will negotiate a new contract and bring his uh, like a squad roll down to rotation, maybe. But yeah, I think a new centre back to go to Veltman. Uh, yeah, that'd be good. McAllister, he has been very, very, very good this year. Obviously, we gave Lalana a very good stint early on. He is 33, so we might have to move him on sooner or later. But he does get a plus two at Cam, so maybe that's the option we go for. Maybe we keep Lalana for a couple of years, maybe he retires here, or we move him to that, the MLS or something for his last year. But I do think I will be starting with McAllister, the 22 year old. Uh, yeah, solid. Anyway, our top two. Malpe has been quite inconsistent, I think, this year. Obviously, he is our top scorer with nine or eight, I think it is. 
um, although he's had so many chances and he frustrates quite a lot of us as Brighton fans that he just can't put in the back of the net. So I think maybe it is best we get another bagsman up front. Obviously we have, if I can find him in the squad hub, we obviously do have the talent we signed in January coming back from loan next year. Uh, Undav here, he's obviously been tearing it up in the Belgian league with our owners like brother club I guess you could say and yeah he's obviously on loan there till the end of the season when he gets back maybe we've given him a stint of games but I think we do need another striker obviously Welbeck being our only other one but I don't think it'll be realistic to start him every single week I do think Trossard will be a very versatile player I think Trossard will play a lot of play a lot of different positions obviously there you can see you can play left mid striker cam maybe even give him a little bit of a stint at centre mid if you play more attack and football uh he's very versatile i think we could use him although there's been some rumors that maybe he's going to leave i think in this career mode we may move him on in a couple years but i think he would be vital for us getting top 10 this season especially uh but yeah we're just going to go through and i think all of these like lower rated players like below 60 i think we're going to move on and we're gonna either let him go out on loan so miguel i think we won't get that much of us in the games this season so yeah we'll move him on furlong i don't believe again he's not going to get well obviously we haven't got a left back so maybe it's worth converting him to a center back or maybe a left wing but i don't think he'll get much game time emerson i think i'm going to transfer list mainly because of the reason he hasn't got a like a player facing game that just really does bug me sorry guys uh, Leonard has actually been given a little bit of a chance this year. Obviously, he plays in our under 23s, I think it is, and they're doing pretty well this year. But I do think, uh, obviously, in this game, he haven't got under 23, so he's not going to get much game time. So I think rolling them out to maybe a League 2 side could be worth it. Same here with Roberts and Ferguson and Turns and Moran. And Unai Ella, the Frenchman, he changed his nationality to Gabon. So what do you say? He's Gabonese. Afia. Now he's been very good recently for Brighton and under twenty three team under twenty three team. That's why I think a good loan sprint out, maybe he gets some good game time, comes back as like a sixty five rated player. Maybe next season we feature him in some cup games. Uh Sungi as well, I think he's a very good player, but hasn't really got that in him so so far. Sarmiento has been very, very good this year for Brighton's main squad. He's been on the bench. He's featured on the bench quite a lot this year. And obviously, come on in like the 60th minute, maybe, and just gives us that extra push to go forward. He's very, very pacey. What's his pace in game, though? 82, yeah. So he's very, very quick. Very, very quick. Uh, maybe he'll be useful on the bench for us, maybe. Uh, Steele, although I did say maybe we give him a stint of games, I do think we need to move him on. He's not been exponential I think you should say for Brighton he's never really had a run of games because obviously we have Matty Ryan then we sold him on because Sanchez was coming through the ranks and I think it's just time for him to leave now Sasado I have great plans for this guy I think we give him a very good stint of games in the cup matches and we bring him on in less important games I feel as if he could be very good this year so we're going to keep him Kadra out on loan, we'll keep him out there. Kozlovski, I'm very, very excited for him to come back to the Seagulls. I think he could be a, a massive part of Brighton's future, and I hope he is, because he's been tearing up in Belgium again, I think. He is playing with Undo, actually. So we've got a creator and a striker who have been used to playing with each other, which is decent. Now, this is what I mean. Rather than bringing in a keeper, maybe we bring back Sherpent from loan obviously now he's got a real face in the game as you guys can see 68 rated very young I think he's also very very tall how tall are you six for eight so he's even taller than Sanchez maybe we give him a run of games so I think that's what we're gonna do we're gonna recall Sherpent from loan I know some of you guys may be a little bit sad about that but yeah showing great potential that's 85 I think he could be world class I think he could be an amazing keeper for us in the future uh, where are we? Here we are. Cochrane or Cochrane. Um, don't know how you pronounce it to be honest. On loan at heart, we'll keep him there. Aaron Connolly is an interesting one. Obviously, he's not really featured for Brighton recently. He's been out on loan loads and loads. I think he was out on loan at Blackburn last year. 
Now, obviously, at Middlesbrough, uh, I think it was Millwall the year before as well, so we've never really had a run. Maybe when he comes out, we sell him or we use him as a backup. Sorry, I missed out Alzate there as well. Alzate, I think we're going to give him a loan stint out. I think we have enough midfielders in the club to like give us enough depth in the squad since we're not in European competitions. Now, Baluta. I, have think, I don't think I've ever seen Baluta feature in a Brighton match, and that is why we are going to be selling him. Ostergaard now. Obviously, he's been out on loan quite a lot, as Brighton do a lot, like to loan out our younger talents. Ostergaard did quite well in the Championship, I think, last season he was there. Uh, now, obviously, at Genoa, I think we're keeping there for this year. Maybe he comes back as a backup. Uh, Matt Clark will keep out on loan. Not really much to say about him. I think well, he'll leave when he comes back. Same with Andone. Obviously, we signed him for a lot of money. Uh, never really worked. Obviously, he scored that wonder goal against Palace that all the Brighton fans will remember him for. I think it's time for him to go when he comes back. Van Heck now. I think this guy's amazing. I've seen some of his clips for Backbone when he's been playing. And he's been really, really good. So I think when he comes back again, he'll be our backup for us. Seaman now, obviously we signed him in January, I think it was. And we loaned him out straight away to Stoke. And I think that's what the philosophers of Brighton are very, very good at. We're good at signing good talents, getting them game time, giving them confidence. And then coming back and being, be actually being able to play for us. So yeah, I think he'll be a very, very, very good part of what we know to build in the future. Uh, so yeah, Danny Welbeck here. I think he can stay. Maybe we should let his contract run out. Or maybe we give him a one-year extension in January if he's been very, very good for us. But yeah, there's not much else to say for him. He's been very, very good this year, actually. He's scored quite a couple of goals for us. Some important ones. Obviously, that header against Chelsea. Mitoma, haven't really heard much about him. Obviously, he is out on loan with Undav and Kozlovski uh, out at Union SG. It's probably the most popular club for our players to go to, as obviously our owner is brother clubs with them. Obviously, that must help. Uh, but I think he can stay. Shane Duffy, he's been at the club since 2016, and I think he'll stay here for another couple of years, so we'll, do, we'll replicate that in the career modes. Moda, as I said before, He'll be starting for us most likely, so I think it'll obviously keep him. Now we have the face scan, which helps out lots. Uh, Solly March, again, here since 2013. He's been a club legend for ages, um, so yeah, he'll be staying. Adam Lallana, I said my plans. He's, we're going to convert him to a cam, use him as backup. Maybe move him on to like the MLS in his last couple of years. Uh, Tariq Lamptey, obviously, our dynamite down the right. Uh, that round. I'm poet, I didn't even know it. <laughs> Showing great potential, so they've given him a potential boost recently, which is pretty good. 20 years old, I think he will be staying at Brighton for another couple years, so we will be replicating that. Obviously, Undav, we've talked about again, he'll be coming back from Rowan, we'll use him as a backup or a starter. Then Wepu, again, one of my favourite players, he'll be staying here. Obviously, he's got a face scan now, which is brilliant. Same here with McAllister. I love his face this year. It's amazing. Uh, Adam Webster now. Obviously a face scan in the game. 26. I think he can stay for a couple of years. Then maybe we move him on. Malpe here. I think he does need to stay. I think he has got a couple of years left in him at Brighton. Obviously he joined from Brentford in 2019. Before their potential stint. Uh, to get promoted. Uh, and obviously they did in the end but I think he does have to stay Pascal Gross, now this is one of the players I'm not a massive fan of at Brighton, I think he's too slow, I don't think he has enough hunger for the ball, I don't think he has the best qualities and I've said multiple times, I don't think he's Premier League quality uh, and to be honest, I don't think he's top 5 league quality so maybe if we move him off to like a lower league, maybe even championship or like a Liga NOS maybe something like that, I'm not sure Feltman, I've said about before, we're going to convert him to a centre-back, obviously, I don't know why he isn't in-game, maybe it's because of the recent full-back system we've been playing when Rebster was injured, but I think he'll be staying here for a little bit, maybe move him on next year, uh, and then make some money from him. Sanchez, our number one, as I said, I've been very controversial with him this year, I don't think he's been the best keeper, but I think his size and feet will help him out a lot, so obviously now I've got a face scan, which is good. And he's a good young prospect. Obviously, he's been in our academy since 2015, which is pretty, pretty long. You think about that, eight years' time he's been in that academy. He must be so happy. 
then Trossard here. Said plans if said my plans I'm ready. Same with Cucurella. Lewis Dunk, I'm gonna keep here until he retires. I don't think he wants to move. I don't think he needs to move. And then Yi Basuma, as I said. Some people don't like him, but I definitely do. And yeah, that's the whole squad. I'm gonna add some development plans. Sanchez, I think well, he needs to improve that sort of handling. He's been powering the ball quite a lot this year. His position has not been amazing either. Getting that five topic foot would be nice as well. As Brighton likes to play around the back, maybe it would be very nice for him to be able to use both feet. Um, McGill will probably use the same as his weak foot's quite low. Sherpa now, I think we use the same handling quite low. Haven't really seen him in action, so I can't really doubt much of him. But I think he'll be a good talent for the future. Steel can't improve, so there's no point in putting one on him. Solly March, we're going to convert to a left mid as left wing backs aren't a part of our system. So yeah, that'll get us like finishing up and stuff, which is good. Uh, Cucurella, I don't know why he's been converted to a left back in game, but yeah, definitely make him a left mid and Brighton career mode, guys. He goes up twice in overall. It's quite good, actually. Follow now, I don't think he suits being a left mid due to his passing shooting stats. I think a centre back's probably better. Uh, 22 weeks is quite a while. Roberts, I only do as a centre backs depending on their defending or physical. I either do stopper to get the physicals up or sweeper to get the defending up. And in this case, it's sweeper. And then we'll go through. So here it'll be another sweeper. Another sweeper. In this case, physical. So stopper. Shane Duffy can't improve, so we'll just keep him the same. Same here with Lewis Dunk. Uh, Webster, obviously physical, so stopper. Uh, Veltman being converted to a centre back to get that overall up. Uh, Lamptey obviously converting into a right mid, which might take a little bit. Yes, yeah, 66 weeks. I think that's ridiculous for me, eh? I think he is a natural right mid, so I don't know why he's classed as a right wing back in game. A centre back, I guess. Maybe I'll just improve him defensively. Uh, Basuma will be converted to a centre mid, as that's what we're going to be playing in this year. 23 weeks again, I think that's quite ridiculous considering his stats. Moda, another centre mid, eight weeks, should be the four, I think. Trossard, it's quite tough to put him in a position because of the amount of positions he can play. So if I put him as a cam, he can play left mid as well. If I put him as a striker, he can't play either. So I do think cam is probably the best spot, or maybe centre forward. Uh, so I think, yeah, set forward four weeks, that's absolutely fine, we can play in that. Gross, you can't improve, so yeah, get him out of here. The centre mids, I normally look at the work rates and do it on that, because I like to have high, high centre mids, so they're very hard working. But in this case, obviously, he already is high, high, but the defensive stats need some improvement, so we'll improve those. Lana, I said we're going to be converting to uh, Cam in this situation. <laughs> Leonard, I think, has the stats to be a cam, so we'll be we will be converting him to a cam. And yeah, there we go. Eight weeks done that. Um, and we're up here, high high, obviously, but his worst stat is his defending. So you will get that up as high as possible by putting that on him. Same here with uh, Zate. He hasn't got the high defensive work rate either, so that will help him. Neme Allah with Cam, I normally look at the shooting and the dribbling. In this case, it's the shooting that's wrong. So, yeah, try to strike on him. Um, McAllister, I think, obviously, he needs that high work rate, but I think he does need some pace too, which works out good with the uh, shadow striker plan, which is nice. Uh, Moran, probably the same shadow striker. Sarmiento here, we're going to convert to a Cam, I think. I think we're going to get a lower rated backup right mid for Lamptey in this case. Because I don't think with 29 defending, that's not going to improve that much. It's good for him to be a up and down right mid. Uh, Emerson, looks like he can be a cam rather than a centre forward, doesn't he? So yeah, make him a cam. Ferguson, uh, we'll do shooting. So poacher. Uh, Malpay needs attack and work rate up, so poacher. Well, bet can't improve, and yeah, that's the plans done. So contracts wise, 
we look at the one year contracts obviously we have free out on loan so we can't do anything about that hopefully they decide to stay in the end uh, Pascal Gross we're getting rid of so that's fine same with Baluta I think Welbeck might let his contract run out or we'll sign him in a new deal in January uh, McGill I think he deserves a new deal so we'll give him a little bit of a pay rise maybe 3.5k a week he wants to stay for two years as a prospect so that's fine uh, furlong haven't really got any plans and neither with emerson so that's absolutely fine then so the last thing i want to do in this episode is look at our board expectations our finances and you look at our youth academy and see what we have there maybe set up a new scout and then i'll let you guys decide in the comments what we do next so yeah in the budget i like to do 90 or i like to bring it so the wage budget's about 100k so that works out nicely 89 to 11 which means we have a budget of 42 million or maybe a little bit less for you guys to decide who we sign in the next episode now getting on into the emails we have got it's obviously one for Sherpin coming back on loan one about a pre-season tournament about the transfer market we have the youth academy which we'll check out in a minute our uh, same envisions and expectations our first scout report we'll look at that next episode and introductions to our scouts so yeah, we'll have a look at the ball expectations first. For youth development, they want us to sign at least two players younger than 20 with a potential greater than the average overall rating of the players currently in the same position. Uh, and for long term, they want us to sign one youth player to the senior team and then play them in five matches either as part of the starting 11 or come on as a sub. I think these are easily completable and we will definitely be doing that. Now for brand exposure, which is a medium priority, we have to get seven games with at least one goal scored in away matches. We actually have quite a good away record compared to our home record. So I do think that that will affect that quite nicely. I think we'll be a lot better away than we are at home. Obviously we're not in Europe, so we haven't got continental success. Domestic success, finish mid-table. That's exactly what I want to do. And then the FA Cup reached around a 16. That's probably quite doable, I believe. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. Financial now. Within two seasons, increase your club worth by 25% through player sales and competition prize money rewards. That's probably very easily doable. Moving on to the last thing of the episode, we're going to look into the Youth Academy. Wow, guys. We have got an absolute star in our academy, Samuel Oliver. He's quite a tall young lad, 17 years of age with a potential of 81 to 94 he looks like the perfect pascal gross replacement and i think that's what he is gonna be so we'll put the development plan on him here uh, i think we'll boost that defensive side of him up a little bit uh, so yeah we'll put that plan on him and he'll be a perfect gross replacement for our bench we will be promoting him now we got Liamin Chekhamani, who I think could be alright, but I don't think has much point in being in our academy. Another Moroccan here, Ibrahim Mameri. Um, I think he could be actually quite good. Obviously, he has quite good potential range. But as I said with Sarmiento, he has quite bad defending. So I think converting him to a cam will be very, very uh, useful for us that says it's going to take quite a while actually uh, so maybe it's not worth doing but I do think it will complement our style of play a lot more and then Lucas Schmidt I don't think has a future here so yeah we just have a memory in the academy currently but I think now we will be setting up a new academy in the U staff section that's good we already have a five star five star scout but is there one in no, there's not. So every month I'll check back and if there's a five star, five star scout, I will be signing that. Obviously there isn't there, but we have Daniel Peacock here. Um, we're going to look at English defenders as we're quite experienced in that position. So you bring in a good young talent could be good. So we'll do defensive minded for six months out in England. Daniel Peacock, you're gone. I think that's all we're going to cover for today, guys. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, this is obviously our team some suggestions for transfer maybe give us some selections you want to see in the team some more give us some ideas for what you want to see um, but yeah thank you guys for being here please like and subscribe and i'll see you next time peace